Hi everyone, welcome to the Everlasting Gospel, JesusTheGoodNews.com Weekly Bible Study. I am Jerry Lynn Davis, minister to the unsaved and humble servant of Master Jesus Christ. I will say it every time, folks. Alleluia! Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords, our blessed hope, folks. The only begotten Son of God the Father, fully God, fully man, sinless. Because we are all born into sin, because we're descendants of Adam and Eve, and we being in the flesh continue to sin daily, we are born spiritually dead, folks, and we all need Jesus Christ for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. Jesus Christ, the only pathway to Almighty God, the only way, John 14, 6. Jesus Christ walked this earth over 2,000 years ago now, folks, born humbly into this world of a virgin, grew to be a man, freely chose to lay his life down for us, bled, suffered, and died on the cross, was laid in the tomb, and arose triumphantly the third day to conquer sin and death, to destroy the works of the devil. Now, folks, it's up to each one of us to use our free will the Lord has blessed us with, to choose to believe on Jesus Christ, Romans 10, 9, and to commit our lives to serve him. Remember, our time on this earth is short, folks. This life is temporary. Consider where you want to spend eternity because hell indeed is a real place. Indeed. Again, welcome to the channel. I invite you to like, share, and subscribe to partake of the living word of Almighty God. Nothing added to or taken from it. The Lord's word is the only book in this entire world that contains pure wisdom, true wisdom. Because it's the only book completely inspired by the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. The only book that can benefit us for eternity. Knowledge is power, folks. Something that the enemy of our souls, the devil, does not want us to have. That's why the Bible's always under attack. That's why the Bible's called hate speech. The devil and those who serve him do not want people to know the truth. Consider that today. Why do you want to consider to live your life every day in spiritual darkness when the wisdom of the Lord's word is right in front of you, easily accessible? Grasp onto it, folks. If you're in need of a Bible, check out HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com. Click on the Bibles tab, request your free Bible. It would be my privilege to send you one. It's a gift from Almighty God to you. Amen. We're continuing this week in a new book, the book of 1 Peter. And this is a letter or epistle that the Apostle Peter had written to the body of Christ from Rome during the time when Emperor Nero was ruling, right before the time that Nero unleashed mass persecution upon the body of Christ. You know, around 63 AD, or as I like to say, ADAR, after death, after resurrection. Amen. Praise Jesus. So again, open your Bibles, hopefully you have one, to 1 Peter. And I'm going to pray over the message. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of another day. Thank you, dear Lord, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for providing us all your precious holy word so we always have access to it and always have access to the truth, to know how much you love us, to know the absolute truth. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for shining the light and the hope of your precious divine plan of grace into the spiritually darkened world so we know that we are not destined for eternity in hell. You prepared hell for the devil and his angels, but for those who freely choose to reject Jesus Christ, 
they will go there as well. So thank you, Lord, for patiently waiting because you don't want any of us to perish and go to hell. Lord, thank you for the privilege you've blessed me with to share your word with others. I pray you equip me to deliver your message so it's pleasing to you and enlightening and encouraging to those who hear it. I pray that you cast out all hindrances so this message is delivered to the hearts, the minds, the ears of those who need to hear it. Thank you, dear Lord, most of all, for Jesus Christ, your precious only begotten Son. To you be all the glory, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, folks. So again, 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So again, to the strangers scattered, the body of Christ through persecution were scattered. So he's addressing the body of Christ. And again, folks, this book and the Lord's entire word is intended for all of us, not just the original audience. Amen. Praise Jesus. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. He's addressing the body of Christ. Amen. Through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Beautiful. In the book of John, chapter 3, verse 3, we read, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Indeed. So Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in this account, who approached him. And Jesus was breaking it down to him. We must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. So Peter is addressing the divine plan of Almighty God. According to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Indeed. I'm going to read here 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 22. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. The scripture refers to the fact that, again, we are descendants of Adam and Eve. So through Adam, the first man that the Lord created on this earth, he sinned, fell from grace. The sin is passed down to us. So through Adam, all die, spiritually dead. So the second man, Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, died on the cross for our sins. So in Christ shall all be made alive. Indeed. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for those of us who freely choose to believe on Jesus Christ and live our lives in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. 
that inheritance is waiting, reserved in heaven for us. Amen. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Indeed. So as Jesus tells us, uh, he was addressing the sheep who hear the voice of him, the good shepherd, in John chapter 10, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Indeed. Continuing here in Peter. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. So Peter's reminding the brethren, realizing we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, part of the family of God, inheritors of the kingdom for eternity, greatly rejoicing in that. But now, in this season, they're enduring manifold temptations. They're enduring persecution, something that is a given once you are saved and serving Jesus Christ. It's a part of the daily Christian struggle. Indeed. So Peter's reminding them of that. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. We are tried through daily trials and temptations. We are tried as gold and silver is tried in the fire. As we read in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 3, the finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. The Lord looks at our hearts, folks. If we have a heart for him. Man can be easily fooled. But the Lord knows all things. He knows what's in our hearts. Indeed. Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. As in 1 John 5, 5, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Not seeing him, but believing. Believing who he is, believing what he did for us when he died on that cross and said it is finished, destroyed the works of the devil. In whom having not seen ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Indeed. In Romans chapter 6, verse 22, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end, everlasting life. Everlasting life, indeed. Praise Jesus. Continuing here, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So Peter is speaking of the prophets who were given to the Jewish people in Old Testament times to warn them to turn from the ways of the heathen and turn back to Almighty God. We read a history throughout the Old Testament of the Jews under certain rulers that they had, turning to the Lord or turning away from the Lord, observing the ways of the heathen throughout their history. It is still going on today, folks. However, the Lord 
proclaims to us in his word that all Israel shall be saved. He will be reconciled with his chosen nation, the nation of Israel, during the end times. There will come a time when they will call on the name of the Lord. And they will be restored to him and their land will be restored to them. However, they're going through rough times and they will continue to go through rougher times because of the disobedience. Just as all of us will continue to go through persecution, those of us who are the Gentiles and serving Jesus Christ, and those who are not saved will continue to go through a lot of mass deception and trials and tribulations, but even more so once we are saved because then the enemy puts a target on us. Indeed, but the Lord watches over his own. When you are unsaved, you are on your own. Consider that today. Amen. Continuing here in 1 Peter, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ was, which was in them to signify the prophets were given these revelations from Almighty God. Things that they did not experience in their lifetime of what was going to take place. The beautiful divine plan of Almighty God. Jesus Christ, born into the genealogy line of the Jewish people, which is why the Jews are the chosen nation of Almighty God. Not because he, he is a respecter of persons, because he's not. Through the genealogy line of the Jewish people, specifically through Jesus Christ, our perfect sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God, Jew and Gentile alike are now free to come to Jesus Christ for forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. The prophets were given these revelations to share. However, in their lifetimes, they would not see these things. So they were inquiring about it. They were certainly excited about it, on fire for the Lord, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which, is, which was in them, to signify. Indeed. Reading here in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 9, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that's a reminder, folks. There are false messengers out there saying that we're all God's children, which is a lie. We are created in the image of Almighty God. The Lord loves us, but he does not love our sins. And we are not considered the children of Almighty God until we are saved in serving Jesus Christ. That's it right here. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Right there. Continuing here in 1 Peter, Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The angels, created beings, again, by Almighty God. The Lord blessed us with the perfect gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. The angels did not experience such things, so they are curious about it as well, which things the angels desire to look into. Indeed. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Indeed, be sober, which means to be focused on your spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. To stay on that narrow pathway. To not allow the things of this world to distract you, to hinder you, to cause confusion and fear worldly fear which is nothing but torture and comes from the devil because he is the prince of this world but fear of the Lord reverence and holy 
fear for him is the only fear we should have. To not allow these crippling agendas of the world to keep us down. To keep us looking to this side, to this side, wondering what this person is doing, what this person is doing. The Lord wants us to be sober, be vigilant. Indeed. Continuing here, verse 13. Again, gird up the loins of your mind. Indeed. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. To reflect the character of Jesus Christ, the true body of Christ. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. The Lord spoke this in the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 44, when he was addressing the Jewish people. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Again, once we are saved in serving Jesus Christ, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. We are all called to be holy once we're saved in serving Jesus Christ, indeed. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear, again, holy reverence fear to Almighty God alone, not fear of the world, not fear of man. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Indeed, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Jesus Christ foreordained before the foundation of the world, folks manifested for us. I'm going to go here into the book of Romans chapter 3 verses 23 through 26. As a reminder, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation or a substitute through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Indeed, to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Indeed, beautiful plan of salvation through Almighty God. Again, all we have to do is freely choose to believe and follow the Lord's way, not our own way, not the ways of the world. Indeed, just as Jesus Christ was not of this world when he walked on the earth over 2,000 years ago, we who serve him are not of this world either. We dwell in the world, but we do not have to be part of it. Continuing here in 1 Peter. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And God alone. Amen. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart. Fervently. Being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, the seed of Adam, but of incorruptible through Jesus Christ. By the word of God, Jesus Christ, the word made flesh, which liveth and abideth forever. Indeed, Praise Jesus. In the book of Matthew 28, verse 18, 
16, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Indeed. Almighty God raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. He was glorified when he was raised up from the dead. And until all things are put under his feet, all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Then everything will be restored back to the Father. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Praise Jesus. By the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. And again, we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Indeed. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Our life is temporary, folks. Our life is but a vapor, as the grass and the flower that withereth and falleth away. Focus on the eternal. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. That's why it's called the everlasting gospel. Indeed. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Amen. A message of hope to get on the narrow pathway, to stay on the narrow pathway, to endure, to display the character of Jesus Christ the true church, the true body of Christ, working together in unity, loving one another through the pure love of Almighty God that only we can accomplish through the Holy Spirit, which is a gift given to us once we're saved. Our comforter, our counselor, who dwells in us. That's why we're all considered part of the body of Christ then, because the Holy Spirit which Jesus Christ and God the Father share the same Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons and one Godhead. And once we're saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, we're part of the body of Christ as well. Working together to lift up Jesus Christ, to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit, to give all glory to the Father, to boldly share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Amen. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. I pray that this message has encouraged you to get a Bible if you need one. HTTPS, JesusTheGoodNews.com If you happen to be watching this message and are saved, continue to boldly share the good news of Jesus Christ with others and stay on the narrow pathway. If you are unsaved, I encourage you today, folks, to think about where you want to spend eternity. And I pray that the Lord God continues to get your attention. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.